Hello everybody, Gordon Henderson here. And I thought I'd give you a little demonstration of my tiny basic running on the W65C134SXB board. Um, if you've not seen this board before, it's this little thing down here. Uh, there's a 65C134 microcontroller here, 32K RAM, um, 128K flash, USB, bunch of logic, 32K crystal, 3.8 megahertz crystal, and a reset button, and a whole bunch of I/O ports. It's a 6502 with a few extra bits and pieces attached to it. So I wrote this thing called Gibble, which is a tiny basic, which runs on a 6502. And you might ask why, and I'm going to say why not, because I can, etc, etc, etc. Anyway, it's running on this little thing here. We're going to cut now to the um, terminal screen, and we'll have a look and see what it looks like on the terminal. So this is a uh, Minicom terminal. Um, it's a Linux terminal program running under Linux. Not doing anything at the moment, because I've got it locked in an infinite loop. And I'm just going to reach over, press the reset button, and... Bingo, there we go. Reset it, it uh, booted into itself, it ran the um, basic interpreter and then it automatically loaded and ran a little basic program. And that line at the bottom that says CSEX to boot, one is 70 seconds, so it's one, if I hit the reset button again, one, one, zero. It's somewhere between 10 milliseconds and a little bit less than 10 milliseconds to actually start up and boot. So I'll show you some of the features of it. It's basic. Yeah, it's basic. And there you go. The little startup program, that's our little startup program. We've got a very, very basic filing system. Uh, we've got 16 file names, for lack of anything better to call them. Uh, they're organized into various spaces. Now, this is all stored on EEPROM on the device. Um, so if I were to load file 8, that's the uh, Pi program. There's the uh, Pi program. Something else uh, copied off the internet somewhere. Let's run it. Number of digits. Calculate Pi to 10 digits. And there we go. So we can we can do do various various things with it uh, that you can do a basic. Now it is integer only because the basic itself and all the I/O routines and everything occupy four kilobytes. That's it, just four kilobytes. There's a tiny bit extra which is in the uh, the I/O system to do serial I/O, but it's not very big. If I See, so yeah, I load up. Uh, there we go. This, oops, it's LD. You see, we we keep things short. We keep things short. LD one. That's our uh, tiny basic integer Mandelbrot. This will take some time, but it does work. Goes through. Does what it needs to do. Yep, and so on. I will let this finish, and we'll come back to it because this is going to take uh, a good five minutes or so. Anyway, bear with me. And there we have it. That took, uh, well, just over five minutes. But what do you expect for something running on a 3.8 megahertz 8-bit microprocessor? There's your Mandelbrot. So as well as... Um, Basic, the uh, our little board here, our lovely little board. We've got some I/O. Um, this connector here, that's basically the full processor bus and a few other little bits of signals. There are four LEDs up here, and there is this is some sort of weird serial bus which I'm going to quietly ignore. There are three eight-bit ports along the other side. The board itself uses a lot of these signals. So we've got 8 bits there, we've got 7 bits on that, and we've got 1 bit on that. Maybe another 4 bits on that, depending on um, what you're using. Um, but the LEDs here, I uh, added a little command. 
um, to light the LEDs. So hopefully you can see two of those four LEDs going up. And we can uh, switch them over. Uh, we can read them back as well, just in case we uh, forget the value. But it also means it saves us a variable, because we've only got 26 variables inside our tiny basic. The uh, the other port, it's just, it's just digital I.O. It's 5-volt um, TTL level digital I.O. sort of thing. Um, if I load up um, this... Um, you should all be familiar with that pattern. There's your Larson scanner. I kind of like to to build the uh, the Larson scanner using data and read statements, but Tiny Basic doesn't have data and read statements, so I I did it a sort of interesting way of creating strings with a pattern, turning those strings into a number and storing that number into free memory. And uh, what we can see on the uh the screen is the uh the the poking um thing there. So the the little bit of code between lines three hundred and line three hundred and four um kinda does does the whole thing. It's uh V reads the value out of the, the RAM, goes up to 800. 800 says question mark P. So question mark is by indirection. It says, basically it says poke V into address P. Um, address 4B there on that line 800 is the address of the 70 second ticker. So we set the 100 second ticker to zero. I'll wait until it's greater than value T, which was defined at the top of the program which I think is 10 centiseconds. And that's it. Anyway, I'll leave you with that for now. Um, questions, comments, anything, welcome. Um, say hello. Have fun.